Hey, what's new and exciting? It's Kevin O'Shaughnessy here, and in this video, we're going to talk about whether or not you need to learn how to read music in order to play guitar. If this is your first time to the channel, thanks so much for stopping by. Feel free to have a look around. I post videos mainly on learning how to play guitar, but I also dabble sometimes in music production and songwriting. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, then please consider subscribing. So, reading music, do you need to know how to do it in order to play guitar? Well, the short answer is no. Now, before you click away from the video, satisfied in the answer you have received, let me give you a few reasons why you might want to do it anyway. Now, if you're looking to be a professional guitar player, there are some situations where reading music is not required, but there are others where it's absolutely required. So your goals here are going to be pretty important. If you're looking to be a session player, for example, and sessions take on many forms. It can be in the recording studio, it can be in a musical theater pit band, it can be in a GB band, right? General business, these are the guys that play weddings and, and uh, corporate functions and things like that. Then uh, some of those situations, reading music is absolutely critical. For example, in musical theater, if you're gonna be in a pit band somewhere, you cannot get through one of those shows trying to memorize the music. You've got to be able to read it, and you've got to be able to read it really well. Most of the time, those players are only going to get a couple of days worth of rehearsal. They may not even have the charts for that long. On top of that, measures are going to get cut, things are going to get changed, and if you've relied on simply memorizing the original Broadway cast CD of whatever show you're doing, you're going to be screwed. So you absolutely need to know how to read music in a situation like that. Studio sessions can go either way. Some people who would be running those sessions, whether that's the writer or the producer, whoever's in charge really of making sure the whole thing starts and ends on time so they don't go over budget on the recording, they may insist that all their players know how to read charts, or they might just send MP3s ahead of time with the requirement that you learn the song inside out and backwards. Changes in those situations come fast and furious, so as long as you're quick on your feet and you can follow directions, either way, you'll be just fine. So there's a couple of professional examples for why you might need to know how to read music, but what if you have no intention at all of being a professional musician? Maybe you just want to do it for the fun of it, and to be quite honest, a lot of times, that's the best way to do it. Just have some fun playing the instrument. Do you really need to read music? Well, again, not necessarily. But I will tell you that in my experience, knowing how to read music has made understanding the music that I'm playing so much easier. And I'm not even exaggerating that. Now, if you followed this channel for any length of time, you've probably heard me equate music to a language, right? It's got an alphabet in terms of its notes and rhythmic durations. It's got vocabulary in terms of its scales, chords, and rhythmic patterns. It's got its grammar, which is basically the music theory. How do chords and scales work together and such to, to make music? And it's got vernacular, right? Uh, it's You could think of that as different styles. What makes jazz different from rock, different from classical, and so on. Now, like any language, you can absolutely learn how to speak it without learning how to read or write it. Look at any young child. Uh, by the time they get to be about two or three years old, they're speaking in complete sentences, but they don't know anything about their alphabet or spelling words or diagramming sentences or any of that kind of stuff. All of that comes later. And we do tend to learn music in the same way. You've got to learn how to play a few things first, then you can start adding names to the things you know how to play. Like, oh, that's a major scale, that's a pentatonic scale, that's a C chord, that's a D chord. But much like any language, eventually you get to a point where the things you want to talk about aren't easy to talk about with the vocabulary that you've got. You've got to expand that vocabulary. You've got to expand that grammar. Taking that another step further, if you've learned how to read music or if you're learning how to read music, then you're starting to see visual representations of patterns and things that you're going to see, not just in one song, but in many of the songs that you're learning how to play. So you could be learning how to play song A, and it's got a particular rhythm pattern in it. And then one day you're listening to the radio or wherever it is that you get music, could be Spotify, whatever. You listen to that and you hear a different song from a different artist that uses the same pattern. Well, if you know what that looks like on paper, you now have two different ways of recognizing that pattern. You've heard it, but then you've also got an image that can jump up in your mind, which allows you to recognize it a lot more quickly, which means you're one step closer to learning song B 
without having ever picked up the guitar to try to figure it out. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, leave me a thumbs up and let me know. In the meantime, what's your experience with reading music? Do you know how to do it? Do you avoid it like the plague? Do you rely on tablature or your ear? Let's talk about it in the comments below. Until next time, go practice the guitar. I am Kevin O'Shaughnessy, and I will see you in the next video.